Hello everyone. In this video, we will go over how to write data to individual cells in Excel using the Excel Interop library. We will also go over how to read data into variables. We will then go over how to save workbooks programmatically. In front of us, we have a basic Visual Studio project that has the Interop library installed and will create an empty workbook. If you have any questions on how to set this up, feel free to refer to my other video that I will link down in the description. Let's go ahead and run the project as is. As expected, it created an empty workbook. The first step to reading and writing data is to create a reference to the worksheet. To do this, we will type worksheet worksheet equals sample workbook dot worksheets sheet one. Now, when it comes to referencing worksheets, there are a few ways to do it. The first is what I've just done, which is pass the actual name of the worksheet, which in this case is sheet one. Alternatively, you could pass the position of the worksheet like this. It's important to note that the starting index for worksheets is 1. This may feel a little odd since as programmers, we've gotten used to using a zero-based index system for arrays. However, a common theme throughout the Excel Interop library is that it is usually not zero-based when re referencing the position of certain elements like worksheets in this case. Now that we have a reference to the worksheet, we can start writing to individual cells. We will start by changing the value of just one cell. To do this, we will type worksheet.range a1.value equals sales amount. I've used sales amount as an example header. This header text will be written to cell A1, which is what I have passed into the range object. The range object is what is used to represent one or multiple cells. Let's go ahead and run our code. As you can see, the text was written into cell A1. So that's how you write static text into one cell. But what if you have a bunch of data that you want to write into cells dynamically? For example, let's say we have this array of sales data where each value represents the price of a sold item, and we want to write this data into one cell after another. To do this, we will need to use a for loop. So let's type for int x equal to 0, x less than sales data dot length, x plus plus. Then we will type worksheet dot range a plus 2 plus x dot value equals sales data x. Let's break down this line a little bit. For each iteration, we are changing the cell we are working with. The first iteration, we have a2, since we have 2 plus x and x is 0. And for each iteration after, we're incrementing by 1. So we'll have a2, a3, a4, and all the way until we finish the loop. Let's go ahead and run our code. The program has now written each element of that array into column a, starting from a2 and has worked its way down. Now instead of writing data into just one cell, what if we wanted to write the same data into a range of cells? We can do this by changing the syntax of the parameter we pass to the range object. We can do this by typing worksheet.range b2 colon b6. So instead of specifying just one cell, we can specify the first cell colon then the last cell. And then we can assign whatever value we'd like. In this case, I will type dot value equals sale. Let's also assign a header to keep things consistent. Let's go ahead and run our code. So now we've taken the text sale and wrote it into every cell within the range we specified. When working with ranges, you may end up working with the same range over and over again. It might be easier to declare a range object in that case. To do this, we will type range range equals worksheet.range a2 colon a6. This makes things a little bit easier if you know you will use this range often. If we test this out, we'll see that we'll still get the same result. This covers different ways to programmatically write data to Excel files. But now let's talk about reading data. Reading data is pretty straightforward. We will type string cell data equals double quotes plus worksheet.range a2.value. We add the double quotes here as an easy way to cast the cell contents as type string. We do this because when we read data, it will be read as whatever data type it is in Excel. So if we have a cell that contains numbers, it will be read as an int or a double, which will lead to a type mismatch error. So to avoid this, I typically always prepend the double quotes in the beginning of the statement. 
I'll go ahead and print out the result as well as add a read line statement so that we can stop the program from ending. Let's go ahead and run our code. As we can see in the console, we have printed the contents of cell A2, which happened to be test. Reading data like this can be very useful. Depending on what you're doing, you may read data and then apply formulas to it, apply conditional logic based off of it, etc. Lastly, after working with our workbook, we will want to save it. Saving is very straightforward. To do this, we will type sampleworkbook.saveas, and we will pass in the save path for the workbook we've created. Let's go ahead and run our code. That's all for this video. If you found this video helpful and would like to see more like these, please like and subscribe to the channel. Also, if there are any topics I haven't covered, feel free to suggest them in the comments. I may make a video about them in the future. Thanks for watching.